aspirants i welcome you all to editorial analysis of shankar ias academy today we have two different topics to be discussed in this first topic we'll be discussing in detail about demographic dividend and its effects and in the second topic we'll be discussing in detail about uh, what is this green hydrogen how it is produced what are all the advantages and disadvantages so without any delay let us get into the first news article discussion now look at this topic about green hydrogen since india is moving towards a greener energy and uh, focusing more on the renewable energy sources green hydrogen is a very good alternative and that is why we have chosen this particular topic so we also have a mains question for you to write you can write an answer and post it in the comment section let me read out the question discuss the role of uh, green hydrogen in achieving india's net zero emissions target by 2070 highlight the challenges in financing green hydrogen projects and suggest measures to overcome these barriers so this is a 15 marker question for 250 words you can write and post it in the comment section so that we will be reviewing your answer so here you should get an question what is this green hydrogen we would have heard about hydrogen then what is this green hydrogen see here the green it actually mentions about the process through which the hydrogen is produced so usually uh, this type of green hydrogen is produced through electrolysis process and this electrolysis process will be done in a fuel cell so your fuel cell consists of a cathode a negatively charged rod and then anode a uh, positively charged rod so when h2o that is water is placed in this particular fuel cell and when electricity is passed through this particular cell then the h2o it will be splitting into h2 plus o2 where in the process h2 will lose ions and o2 will be gaining an ion and leading to the formation of uh, pure hydrogen h2 and o2 and pure oxygen o2 so this is how the entire process of uh, hyd green hydrogen generation actually happens in the larger scale here you can see the actual picture now here you might have a doubt like for electricity to be passed in this particular uh, fuel cell we need electricity right from where this particular electricity will be generated and that is where the renewable energy comes into play here you can see that the renewable energy it includes all the sources of wind energy all the sources of uh, tidal energy and uh, solar energy even solar energy so these uh, green electricity will be passed through this uh, electrolyzer and then hydrogen processing unit will be there from there the hydrogen will be separated and it will be stored in the form of liquid or in the gas and it will be used uh, in uh, different uh, fields so this is what you have to know when it comes to green hydrogen it is a very potential topic when it comes to both prelims as well as mains and uh, the very important aspect of this particular technology is that uh, it is zero greenhouse gas emission so now having seen about the basics of uh, green hydrogen now let us understand why green hydrogen see as i said earlier it will reduce greenhouse gas emissions secondly it will bring in energy security and independence so that the reliance on fossil fuels will be reducing and the third important thing is you have seen this particular uh, industry setup right so it will also create new jobs and uh, a new sector in the indian economy for example the production storage and distribution alone they can produce about 45 million jobs by 2050 and uh, the fourth important thing is they can decarbonize uh, hard to abate sector say these hard to abate sectors or the sectors which cannot be decarbonized so some of such industries include uh, steel uh, cement aviation and shipping remember this and the final important thing is the technological advancement it will bring in a lot of innovation especially in electrolysis storage and transportation sector so these are the reasons why we prefer green hydrogen now let us see the advantage of this particular green hydrogen see if the first important application is its usage in agriculture see these uh, green hydrogen are used to generate a uh, green ammonia for uh, fertilizers this ammonia helps uh, the plant to increase their yield apart from this we have to engage in the research and development especially the hydrogen powered farm machineries and uh, they also help in water management the second important application is their uh, application in transportation it can be used in uh, fuel cell electro electric vehicles 
in short called as FCEV. Here you can see how a fuel cell electric vehicle actually looks like. So, the electric vehicle will be assisted or will be supported by a fuel cell which we saw earlier and the efficient byproduct of this will be only the pure oxygen. So, the emission will be very low. Now, the third important thing is they can even be used in industries. So, it will help in cost saving and it is very reliable and waste reduction and it will increase the energy efficiency as well. Apart from this, it can be used in uh, energy storage, especially by re reducing the reliance on the fossil fuels and it helps us in managing the peak demand as well. And finally, it provides us an opportunity to export it with the global market. So, these are all the applications of green hydrogen. However, there are certain challenges in green hydrogen implementation. For example, the production, storage and distribution cost is very high. So, for example, the production, storage and the distribution of green hydrogen takes nearly 5.30 to 6.70 per kilogram when it comes to but, it, but when it comes to green hydrogen, it takes only 1.9 to 2.4 per kilogram. Just look at the difference between the two. Secondly, to bring in such innovative uh, things, we require uh, infrastructure and for that, we require a lot of uh, investment as well. And the third important challenge is this energy storage issue. See, sometimes the renewable energy cannot be providing us the actual demand that we require. So, there is an intermittent nature of renewable energy which is a very big challenge, we cannot rely on it. And the fourth important thing is it is highly flammable, so handling it is very difficult, we have to handle it with a lot of care. And finally, we have to bring in a lot of awareness and education among the public to bring in acceptance by the people. Until then, there will be hesitancy to just uh, use this particular uh, thing. Uh, so, these are all certain challenges when it comes to green hydrogen implementation. Now, let us quickly go through some of India's initiative to promote green hydrogen. See, first is this national uh, green hydrogen mission. Uh, this particular uh, mission helps to make India a global green hydrogen hub. So, for this, this particular mission focuses a lot on uh, research and development, demand creation and pilot projects and regulations. A very good uh, initiative of this particular demand creation is that uh, this green hydrogen conception ob obligation so that the a particular uh, sector should be actually mandated to use a particular uh, targeted hydrogen. So, they have to consume the percentage of hydrogen that is set by the government. So, this actually creates demand and the second important thing that you have to remember is this green hydrogen hubs are uh, large scale production units will be identified. Under this regions uh, to set up large scale production and the utilization units will be identified. And finally, they have uh, made a lot of policy interventions. For example, uh, they have encouraged investment even through FDIs and uh, sovereign bonds. And they are also providing subsidies and technology development as well. So, these are all very important facts that you have to remember when it comes to green hydrogen. So far, we saw about how, what is green hydrogen, how it is produced, what are all the reasons why we need hydrogen and what are all the applications of it and what are all the challenges and then initiatives. So, these are all very important facts that you have to remember when it comes to green hydrogen. With these learned points, now let us move on to next news article discussion. Look at this topic from Indian Express newspaper. This topic talks entirely about demographic dividend and it says that the assetless aging population with poor health, health could be a demographic challenge. So, let us understand what are all the important facts given in this article from the mains perspective. Before that, I have a mains question for you. Let me read out the question. India is poised to reap its demographic dividend due to a large working age population. This presents both opportunities and challenges. Discuss. So, you have to write an answer for 15 marker for 250 words and you can post it in the comment section so that you we will be reviewing your answer as well as you will get peer review as well. So, let us start with what is this demographic dividend. See, it is nothing but the growth of an economy that is the result of a change in the age structure in a country's population. So, 
how much percentage of uh, population contribute to the working age population and the contribution of those working age population to the economy is only known as this demographic dividend. So, as well as you, if you have to remember this, you can just go through the etymology of this particular word. Like demographic, it is nothing but the population. Dividend is some thing you get out of uh, some profit you get out of something right so this is how you can remember this particular term now india has the largest youngest population like 67.3 percentage aged between 15 to 59 years see this year is uh, very crucial because this is when people actually work and contribute to the economy even before like uh, 0 to 15 years they will be in education they will be educated and they will not be indulged in any harmful or uh, any particular uh, work they will be contributing to economy and uh, beyond this 59 they will be in the retirement age where again they won't be contributing to the uh, economy of a country so we can tell that people are actually resources and when people are between like 15 to 59 uh, years and when they actually contribute to a larger percentage the economy will get back a lot of dividend from that population so this is what the entire concept is about by by 2030 we, this projection like 67.3 percentage will increase to 68.9 percentage and this will give India lot of advantage compared to aging population, especially when we compare it with US and European countries. Now, let us quickly go through what are all the matters that actually hinders India from reaping the demographic dividend that we currently have. The first important thing is this malnutrition and poor health. For example, 59 percentage of adolescent girls and even 31 percentage of boys have anemia. Anemia is uh, like a lack of proper hemoglobin and then we have uh, below normal BMI for example 52 percentage of boys are below normal BMI. BMI is nothing but the body mass index an index that provides a proper indication whether you have the right weight for the right height. So again for girls like 55 percentage of girls are uh, below normal BMI. And then there is a child under nutrition. For example, 88.7 percentage of children under uh, two lack under two year age, they lack adequate nutrition. So this actually contributes to child under nutrition. And there is heavy disease burden, especially the non communicable diseases. We have seen a lot of cardiac arrest. We have seen a lot of uh, strokes that happen due to lifestyle changes and there are there is limited access to healthcare especially in the rural region so these are all the facts that you have to remember from the malnutrition side and then when we talk about the education and skill development uh, we have a low education level nearly 35 percentage of adolescents they complete 12 years of 12 years of education and as per uh, ASER 2023, there are poor learning outcomes. For example, 77 percentage of 17 to 18 year old can read basic text and 35 percentage they struggle with simple math. So you can quote this in your uh, main answer. And there are also outdated curriculum. For this, we have uh, NEP recently which must be implemented very soon and this outdated curriculum lacks focus on digital literacy problem solving and critical thinking so this actually generates a lot of education as well as the skill gaps and then we have uh, unemployment and underemployment so we know what is unemployment but what is this underemployment it is like being employed being not employed for their actual potential so you have one potential but you will be employed in a very lower uh, grade of any kind of employment so that is what we call it as underemployment so we have rising un unemployment as well as underemployment and there are there is also informal sector dominance in our country which pay which pays very low and there is a lack of uh, social security and for this we have uh, e shram portal you can actually highlight this as well and we have a uh, jobless growth as well where economic growth not translated into sufficient jobs this happens mainly because of uh, the lower development of the secondary production that is we are the hub of uh, it outsourcing but we actually have to grow on uh, manufacturing as well so we are lacking here and for this government is having this pli scheme 
all these need to be implemented properly now following this we have gender disparities as well as future aging population so we have very low female working population participation uh, especially like approximately 24 percent age when we talk about uh, nfhs5 report and we have uh, skewed health indicators especially higher anemia and malnutrition in girls as well as the aging population by 2030 there will be high higher dependency ratio there will be increased demand for pensions and health care as well as assetless elders when it comes to 2030 so these are all certain uh, important uh, things that hinder india from actually reaping the demographic dividend that currently india has now what can be done the solution should be provided right so first thing is we have to improve educational quality so for this we have to focus on foundation learning we have to focus on early childhood education as well as basic skills secondly we have to focus on uh, bridging the dropout rate we have to bring in lot of incentives and improve infrastructure for them to access that particular benefit and finally we can focus on the vocational training we can focus a lot on uh, the skill based education for employment and entrepreneurship this is actually like a skill development itself in the school itself so we can promote a lot of vocational training and then we can focus on skill development and health for example we have to provide targeted uh, skilling and that should align with market demands especially in sectors like technology healthcare and renewable energy here we can provide a uh, education especially education and awareness especially uh, uh, using this artificial intelligence and secondly we have to promote national apprenticeship this can provide a lot of practice to the people and help for uh, on the job training and we can give a lot of uh, maternal health for example we can provide universal health care access this is done through Ashman Bharat as well as the anemia and BMI campaigns this can be conducted in both schools as well as colleges as well as we have to strengthen the existing programs like uh, skill India PMKVY and etc and finally we have uh, portion abhyan and ICDS for the children to get proper nutrition we can even add a lot of uh, millets as well as a lot of fortified food for them to actually get the nutrient that they require at that particular uh, age so these things can be done so so far we saw about what is a demographic dividend then we saw what are all the challenges for the india to just tap this particular uh, demographic dividend then we saw what can be done that is the way ahead so with this we came to the end of the news article discussion if you like the video hit like do comment and don't forget to subscribe to shankar ias academy youtube channel now thank you so much for listening